All right, so the Anthony Joshua called us to comp fight. Uh, the ending was bullshit, in my opinion. Um, there was no reason to stop the fight. I thought that Joshua was winning the fight. Yeah, he was having some difficulties um, in that fight. <clears throat> I thought there was some dirty tactics on on Carlos Takam's part, whether it was intentional or not. Uh, you know, who cares? Um, obviously, that headbutt to the nose probably kind of affected Anthony Joshua. Plus, this wasn't the original opponent that he was scheduled to fight. So Takam took the fight in two weeks' notice or two and a half weeks, three weeks, whatever it was. Um, and he's a constant professional, so he came in uh, ready, right? He was always, he's always in shape. Looks like the type of guy that's always in shape year-round. He takes his, his craft serious, and so he was in shape. He was able to take the fight, right? Well, who knows? Maybe, maybe Anthony Joshua... Prob, you know, and Eddie Hearns probably had to come on standby just in case pull left, pull out the fight for whatever reason. And so the fight, it was a good test for Anthony Joshua. And the one thing I'm going to say about Joshua is this, is that I don't think he's a finished product. I do like him. I do think that, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, the upside, right? The upside to him uh, looks really good. I, I don't think he's the best heavyweight right now. Personally, in my opinion, I don't think he's the best heavyweight. I think there are guys that would beat him. One guy that comes into mind, and I know nobody likes talking about him, that's Alexander Povieka. I, 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 would, I, I think that from what I saw um, from Joshua in a couple of fights, I, I could see Povieka in um, giving him the type of problems that could probably end up beating him um, by like a late round stoppage or if it happened to go 12 rounds. Um, bullshit stoppage, but still better than anything that uh, Deontay Wilder has done, in my opinion. All right, so this Saturday night, you got the rematch, uh, the the mandatory for... Deontay Wilder's WBC belt, uh, the rematch between him and uh, Remain Stavern, the guy he beat, I want to say, almost three years ago already. And I think Lou DiBella is, who's Deontay Wilder's promoter, um, is doing a, a, he's trying his best to spin this as you know, he's against the WBC making this the mandatory, and he's saying the right things, the obvious things, like uh, Remain Stavern shouldn't be the number one contender. And, uh, you know, of course, I, I would agree with that. He shouldn't be the number one contender. And, um, but I think Lou DiBella... Uh, <laughs> Look, this is all part of the plan. Um, I've said this on my other channel that when they were talking about the possibility of Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz, that that was just uh, that was just like a distraction, a a way to promote Deontay Wilder as if he doesn't want he doesn't want to fight Bermain Stavern. Uh, but I knew, I knew that Bermain Stavern was the guy he was going to fight. And I'm not the only one. There was other channels that said the, the, the same thing. And um, I actually got a good uh, tip on this, that this was going to happen by somebody like Maxwell Bear, who told me this fight's going to happen. Don't ask me how Maxwell Bear knew this, but let's just say he told me this fight is guaranteed. It's going to happen. So uh, here it is. Um, this was part of the plan. I, I always That's the way I felt. I always felt that this was part of the plan. 
I think the plan is just to get Deontay Wilder in line to fight Anthony Joshua. And it looks like two, the, the two sides are, are in odds of, of getting this fight done. Uh, to me, it's part of the plan, right? You get them bickering at each other, Joshua and Deontay Wilder, through social media. You get Eddie Hearn saying a few things, and you get people on Wilder's side saying a few things or whatever. It's, it's a push to make the fight happen for next year, right? Um, would Eddie Hearn and, and Deontay, and, excuse me, and, and Anthony Joshua, would, would they like for Deontay Wilder to beat a legit name, a guy that is a good step-up fight from the competition that Wilder has fought so far? Of course they would, and especially if Deontay Wilder looked impressive in doing so. Um, yeah, it would look good. It would look good for a fight, let's say, in the summer of 2018, um, in in the UK, right where 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 Anthony Josh was a huge star, he, he and he you know and he sells tickets like it's nothing, right? He he can he can sell out a seventy thousand uh, seat arena uh, like it's nothing. So of course, and it's all about money. I mean, anybody to deny that this is not about money, it's it's crazy. It's it's exactly what it's about. It's about maximizing the most money, right? So yeah, they would like Deontay Wilder to fight somebody that looks like they could beat him or a step up, a step up in competition and him come out victorious, you know, with, a, with an impressive win. But I, I have a feeling that Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua will take this fight in the summer if this is the only fight Deontay Wilder has until he can get his big fight with Anthony Joshua. That, that's that, that's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, I think Wilder's going to win this fight. He should. You know, he should win this fight pretty easily. Um, I will say there's an outside chance because I don't think Wilder's a really good fighter. I just don't. I'm not sold on it. Uh, I think he's a little shaky in the legs. So, you know, he could get, he, he could get knocked out, right? Uh, obviously. That's the only chance that Bermain Stavern has. But I don't even see that because Bermain Stavern is, what, 38 years old? Um, he's only had one fight in two years. Um, so what can he really bring? I say Wilder beats him, maybe more likely by stoppage, uh, whether it's legit or a PBC stoppage, whatever. I say Wilder wins this fight. It was all part of the plan in the beginning. It was to get him to fight uh, softer competition until he gets to the uh, to the uh, the Anthony Joshua fight. Um, I, look, I will say this: I think that even when it comes to to Anthony Joshua, there's a push to make him a huge star, uh, the best heavyweight before his time. Um, uh, where it's not just Wilder that's being protected. Uh, yeah, there's, when it comes to, especially a guy like Anthony Joshua, there's going to be these bullshit calls that you saw Saturday night with, with the Carlos Khan fight. I don't, you know, do I like it? No, I obviously don't. It, it makes me uh, that much, that much more annoyed with, with boxing today and, I guess you could say boxing's kind of been like that always, but I, I, I just feel that it's a little bit over the top now. Um, so yeah, there, there, is, there is this push to make Anthony Joshua a huge star like they're trying to do with Deontay Wilder, but it's a bit different. Uh, I think Joshua is, um, when it comes to the people that are involved with Anthony Joshua, there's more confidence in what he can do in the ring where Deontay Wilder, in my opinion, uh, is a protected fighter where they're not that confident of what he can do in the ring. Um, so, yeah, that is my video. Peace.